Hey, what's up guys? Eric Wong here and I'm back with video number three. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying this content on nutrition it's you so far. You know, video number one, we talked about the overview and whole natural foods. And remember, that is the foundation. If you're not eating whole natural foods, none of this other stuff matters. It does not matter at all. So until you master that, that's when you move up to the next level. Focus on eating whole natural foods, then you start to think about you as an eater. And you can, you know, not necessarily do those things independently, so you just do one thing at a time, but you get your focus down first, then you keep the other stuff in mind. And once you've got down whole natural foods, you move up, you get that you as an eater stuff, get that down pat and work on that and focus on that. Then when you've got that down, you move up to macronutrients. So macronutrients. Three main macronutrients. What are they? Probably say them in your head right now. You got your protein, you got your carbs, and you got your fat. Okay, so those are the three main macronutrients. And you've probably heard of those before, but let me, for those of you who might be new, just getting into this whole nutrition thing, protein, that's basically the macronutrient that build your muscles. That's how we all know it. Does some other functions in the body, but think of it in terms of muscle building. Carbs, those are the things that are evil and the things that typically provide quick bursts of energy. Okay, also does other things, but that's the main thing there. Fats, fats are important for hormones, so the building blocks for hormones and also building cell walls, building your cells basically. So. In terms of these three macronutrients, two of them are definitely essential. And those would be protein and fat, okay? Carbs are actually not 100% essential. You don't have to eat them to survive. All the other stuff, you have to eat them to survive, but you can get away with not eating carbs because your body can take things like fat, things like proteins, and break them down into carbohydrates that your body uses for fuel. However, doing that is not as efficient as just taking carbs in because then you, there's no conversion processes happen. You can use carbs as fuel right away, okay? A little bit more advanced stuff that we don't need to talk about right now, right yet, because we've got to focus on, you know, what are we doing with these macronutrients? Now, for the most part, it's easier to think about in terms of foods as opposed to, oh, I'm going to eat, you know, I'm not a calorie counter. Calorie counting can work, but I don't think it's necessary. And I think it adds an un unnecessary burden on your time and your energy to figure out. There's easier strategies to achieve the same result. Now, if you're an elite athlete trying to cut weight, I do count calories for those athletes. I make sure that the macros are a certain amount and the overall calories are a certain amount to get the result because we're on a time deadline. It's super important that we get this weight dialed in exactly on a certain date, okay? There's no compromise that's allowed. But if you're eating for a lean body, for just performance in the gym, but you're not a professional athlete, or just being healthy, it's unnecessary. Now, I'm not saying it's something that you can, you should dismiss completely. I think it's actually good for you to do it for a period of time just to get an idea of what calories are all about, a rough idea of how much you're taking in, but again, all those, all those things are estimations. You know, this piece of chicken, how many calories, how much fat, how much protein does it actually have? It's just an estimate. So it's never an exact science, all right? So that's just my little rant on calories. Now, how do you go about eating the right amounts of protein, carbs, and fats? Well, there's some things that you gotta think about in terms of individualization based on your body, your age, and what workouts you're doing but I'm just gonna give some general guidelines and that will help most people here achieve their goals. Okay, it'll get you on the right road, at least get you on the right thinking, and then you can adjust and tweak accordingly, okay? So, I like to think of it in terms of plates. You got big plates and you got smaller plates. Now, if your goal is to build muscle or maximize your performance, for the most part, you 
get divide your plate up like this. Okay, and that's gonna get you eating what you need and what's good for you. A protein fat, remember we're going down, whole natural food, so that's meat, some type of meat always has protein, usually always has fat, unless you're eating boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which are the worst tasting piece of chicken on the damn bird. So some kind of natural meat here, fruit and starch, fruit or starch, and then a fruit or veg there. This way, you've got protein, you've got carbs, you've got fat. Don't have to think about it too much. Look at the proportions. Protein fat makes up a big proportion. This veg fruit could make up a, the other half, or veg and starch could make up the other half of the plate. But that, for the most part, is very simple to look at, very simple to understand. Set your plate up like that, and you'll be good to go. You'll be getting some good amounts of protein, good amounts of carbs, good amounts of fat, okay? In terms of exact portion sizes, as opposed to trying to count calories and weigh your meat, protein, palm of the hand, that's typically one serving of protein, all right? So the bigger you are, the bigger your hand is gonna be, the more protein you'll need, okay? Sometimes, depending on when you're eating, one serving to two servings. Typically dinner, two servings, earlier meals, breakfast, lunch, one serving, okay? Snacks you can get into here. Snacks, veg, fruit, and another type of protein. And it can be incomplete or complete. Now, the difference between an incomplete protein and a complete protein, incomplete proteins don't have all of the essential amino acids. Those are things like nuts, uh, beans, legumes, lentils, nut butter, things like that. Complete protein has all the essential amino acids, meat. When you think of complete protein, just think meat and you're good to go. Other complete proteins, dairy, that's the pretty much the most, the other most abundant one in our diets, okay? Soy is actually also a complete protein, but I'm not a big fan of soy because of other things, GMO. A lot of soy is GMO, and even the organic stuff, that stuff can mess with your hormones. It tends to contain these little compounds called isoflavones that interact and kind of act as estrogens. And those things, especially as guys, you don't want more estrogen in your body typically. Get enough from the environment, from plastics, from pollution, petroleum products, all that kind of stuff. All right? So I typically avoid soy. I don't eat soy. So for a snack, say you're eating between meals, it's not a major meal have some type of protein source, it could be incomplete or complete, and then have a veg or a fruit there. And it's a little bit smaller than your major meal. Okay, so this is a very simple way to go about thinking about what to eat in terms of macronutrients. You don't have to count calories, just make sure your plates are divided up like this. Now, if you wanna, depending on your goals again, your body type, fat loss, what workouts you're doing, this can be individualized. And actually, this is something that I'm gonna be doing with all my Power Dojo members and gonna be talking about how to integrate these things with the specific workout that I'm delivering next week. So they're getting the new workout of the month next week. And the goal is strength, cardio, and fat loss. And I'm gonna show, show the members, show you guys how to eat around the certain workouts, around the different days to maximize those three things. Okay, so if you're interested, make sure you check that out, make sure you join. It's a great community and you'll get huge benefits from it. I'll be able to coach you through whatever you want, whatever your goals are. Let's talk one of the more important, one of the more popular concepts right now, and that's meal timing. So right now, there's three biggies. You got 16-8 fasting, popularized by Martin Birkin on his site Lean Gains. You got 24-hour fasting. You do that once or twice a week, popularized by my man, Brad Pilon. He wrote a book. There's links below for these things. And then you got your typical, you know, four to six meals per day type of thing. Which one do you follow? Doesn't matter. The important thing, whole natural food, you as an eater, eating your macros like this, pick one. Try it out. See how it works for you. 
I used to do this four to six meals a day because that was the popular notion, you know, when I first started learning about nutrition back in like 2005 when I really focused on it. I did that, worked well. I ate whole natural foods, took my time as I was eating, breathed, all those good things that we learned about in the last video, and it worked. Maintained under 10% body fat, energy all day, feeling good, feeling healthy, okay? Recently, maybe last year, I switched to 16 8 fasting, and that's where you basically don't eat breakfast. Your first meal comes around 12 o'clock, around noon or 1 p.m. Your last meal is around 8 or 9 p.m. So you have that eight hour of window where you're eating whatever food you're eating, and that works for me now. That's what I typically do five days a week. On the weekends, I eat breakfast because I like to eat breakfast with my wife. However, during the week, I like to eat or I like to get up do my little morning routine and then get right to work. And I found personally that my mental focus is very is better on this plan, the 168 fasting plan. Get more done, I'm not hungry, it doesn't bother me. I work out usually around 11 a.m. and I've got tons of energy for my workouts, I'm feeling good. And my body composition hasn't really changed. I haven't gotten leaner, I've gotten fatter. I'm still as lean as I was when I was doing four to six meals a day. Now I've tried. 24 hour fasting before, but I just didn't like the effects. I didn't like how I felt on it. I kind of felt, you know, by about 2 p.m., 3 p.m., I started to feel a little bit lightheaded, low energy. All I could think about was eating food, and I just, it didn't work for me. So that plan is eat dinner, say, on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Your next meal is not until Wednesday at 6 p.m. again, okay? So what you've got to do, focus on the first two levels of the pyramid, then get your macronutrients, like the plates, outlined as the plates that I showed you, and then, boom, pick your poison. Whatever structure, whatever plan that you wanna follow, follow that, and follow it for at least two weeks, but even better is four weeks, 28 days, and then you'll know how it's going for you. You know, how do I feel at the end of 28 days? It does take your body time to adjust to a new timing, meal timing pattern, so, Stick with it for at least a few weeks and then make your decision after that. And you might go back to the old way or the new way might be better. Who knows? You gotta try that out, okay? So that is our little talk about nutrition and macronutrients. Now, one of the big questions, how much protein should I eat? You know, we don't normally talk about how much fat we should get in a day. It's always how much protein should I be getting in a day? And you know, you've got your big estimates, two grams per pound of body weight down to you need 60 grams of protein to survive. What is optimal? Well, I haven't di dived into the research too much. I've just focused on, boom, the macronutrients, the plates, and that's worked out for me. I like where my body's at. I've got tons of energy. I recover from workouts well. But if you wanna get a little bit more into the science about it all, you can check out my buddy, Brad Pilon, he's written another book called How Much Protein, and answers that question exactly, goes into the science a little bit. Uh, read that for you, you science junkies. You guys might wanna check that out. But the gist of it is we need probably less protein than we think, unless we're on a very low calorie diet. And it doesn't matter when you get your protein in, you could get it in in one meal, or you could get it in in five meals. What matters is the amount of protein that you do get in. And depending on your workouts and your goals, like muscle building and whatnot, there's some tweaks there, but Brad goes through all that stuff. If you're following my plates, you'll be good to go. And you're eating the right amounts, you're eating whole natural food, you're good to go, all right? But if you, some of you guys like all the facts, you're fact finders, then check out that research that Brad has put together in his book, How Much Protein. Okay guys, so that is video number three. We're done talking about macronutrients. Next up, video number four, we're gonna discuss micronutrients. So micronutrients are things like vitamins, minerals, the different types of fats. We're gonna break those down a little bit. Supplements, the always popular topic of supplements and all that good stuff. Okay guys, so thanks again for checking me out and I will talk to you soon. Later.